Once upon a time when I still bought retro hardware on eBay, I came across a listing for this Cairo 2. The word defective in the title attracted my attention. I couldn't resist and had to get this card. I was under the impression that this graphics card had at least one damaged memory chip. At least this is what I thought to have read in the description of the listing. I even mentioned it in a poll from a few months ago, where the Cairo 2 placed second of the projects you wanted to see on my channel. However, after desoldering a Voodoo 3 graphics chip, I noticed that my fume extractor wasn't good enough for this type of work. Since replacing a memory chip will also create fumes from evaporating flux, I decided to work on other videos and push the Cairo 2 project into the future while waiting for better equipment. But today the future has finally arrived. We are going to have a look at this Cairo 2 from Hercules. The first thing I usually do when receiving an old graphics card is to clean it and service its cooling solution. I already cleaned everything and added a drop of fresh oil to the fan bearing. I firmly believed that the card would power on and we would see artifacts on the screen. However, I was wrong. This Cairo 2 doesn't work at all. No VGA output, no beeps from the motherboard, nothing. This card is completely dead. That was unexpected and will change my method of looking for faults on this card. Since there is no sign of life, let's inspect the card for broken traces, loose pins and missing or cracked SMD components. The PCB of this Hercules Profit 4500 is in good condition. There were no obvious signs of deep scratches or broken traces. So let's move on to inspect the connections of the surface mounted components. Loose pins could be on the memory, the BIOS chip or this voltage regulator. Of course there could also be broken solder connections below the graphics chip, but let's hope this is not the case. Once more I couldn't find anything suspicious and I do not believe that there are any loose connections. Another possibility could be a corrupted BIOS chip. I once revived a Voodoo 3 2000 by reflashing the BIOS. A faulty BIOS was also the reason for this GeForce 2MX not showing any video output, even though the rest of the system booted normally. If we don't find any other faults, flashing the BIOS on this card may be the solution. But let's finish the physical inspection and see if we can find any missing or cracked SMD components. Eureka! After a few minutes I found a broken resistor on the front of the card. Could this be the reason for the card not working? I had a similar issue with a Diamond Monster 3D which couldn't be initialized and wasn't able to render 3D scenes. After replacing the broken component, the Voodoo card worked again. Maybe we have a similar issue here. But before we replace this resistor, a quick word from PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. As you have seen, the blue color of the Cairo 2 looks very appealing. But what if you would no longer be limited to single color printed circuit boards any longer? Would your project stand out if you could have two or more color options on the same PCB? PCBWay has got you covered by introducing full color PCB printing very soon. The colored prints are cured using UV light and withstand SMT reflows, so your PCBs will be as resilient and of the high quality you're used to from PCBWay. Additionally, you can utilize PCBWay's assembly services to receive your fully assembled PCBs. Links to PCBWay.com are in the video description. Most of the body of this SMD resistor is missing and with it the marking that identifies its resistance. I have a strong suspicion that it is a zero ohm resistor like all the other components in this cluster. However, let's verify this by looking at another Cairo 2 that happens to be in my collection. Under the microscope, we can see that R62 is indeed a 0 ohm resistor. As far as I know, 0 ohm resistors are one way to configure circuits, similar to using jumpers. But I wonder what are other reasons to use 0 ohm resistors. Is it purely because it is easier, faster and cheaper to populate PCBs using an SMT pick and place machine? If you have more insights, please let me know in the comments. I took a zero ohm resistor from one of my scrap motherboards. It is wider than the original, but that shouldn't be a problem. We are ready to test the Cairo 2 and see if replacing this little resistor was all that was needed to bring it back to life. And the Cairo 2 generates a picture, reporting a total video memory size of 64 megabytes. Of course, we should test the card in a few games to make sure it works properly. A distant memory reminded me that X-Wing vs TIE Fighter had an option to use Power VR cards. And I always wondered what this option was for. And indeed, one of the configuration screens shows an option to enable Power VR. 
Since I never owned a PowerVR-based graphics card, I was not familiar with their tile-based deferred rendering approach. But this is something for another video. Captain, Rebel Starfighters are entering the area. Very well, Commander. Launch Adventure Squadron. Alright, Rogue. Let's get those fighters. Once we're in the game, the Cairo 2 or Power VR does not get any special mention. We just need to enable the option to use 3D hardware and we're good to go. In later games, Power VR is no longer an option and we just get a generic Direct 3D graphics accelerator to pick from. The good news is that the Cairo 2 works well and I have not noticed any compatibility issues. But that may change once I look into other titles. Considering that the Cairo 2 was released with a price tag of only 150 US dollars, it is astonishing that this card didn't get the recognition it should have. Let me know if you're interested in a comparison of the Cairo 2 and comparable GeForce cards from that time. So, are we already at the end of this video? No, there is still one more issue related to the fan that we need to address. The Hercules fan starts spinning the moment I turn on the system. That is normal behavior and should not surprise anyone. However, if the fan is in one particular position, it refuses to spin up. This card will most likely die from overheating if we do not fix it. So, I had to disassemble the fan once more and see what was going on below the blades. To my surprise, I may have found the issue of why this fan doesn't spin up when stopped at a specific position. I think it is rare to find such an issue easily. However, in this case, you see a broken wire on one of the copper coils. We just need to find the other part of the wire and reconnect it. Luckily, after a bit of careful digging, I was able to find the counterpart. Reconnecting both wires is easier said than done. Those enameled copper wires are extremely thin and coated with a very thin insulation. To solder the wire back together, we first need to burn away the insulation at the ends and then add a short jumper wire, since I need to leave enough distance between me soldering and the remaining wire around the copper coil. The thinnest copper wire I have is 0.1mm in diameter. And this is still thicker than the wire used inside this fan. But there is no other option. I need to save it. It is the original Cairo 2 fan after all. Now the card is back together and I'm very happy that the fan spins up from any position. It looks like my botch wire fix works. I'm really happy it could be saved, because I wouldn't want to replace this fan with something else. The blue design of the card, the blue heatsink and the black fan with a Hercules logo are distinct characteristics of the Cairo lineup. So sorry that there wasn't a memory issue on this card. But this example shows that a thorough inspection may save you a lot of time debugging a non-working video card. A single zero ohm resistor is an easy fix and the Cairo 2 happily renders 3D games once more. I will end this video with 3D Mark running on my Asus P3BF and a Pentium clocked at 1000 MHz. But now I want to hear from you. Did you own a Cairo or a Cairo 2 back then? Why did you decide to go for this card instead of ATI or Nvidia? And most importantly, were you happy with it? I'm looking forward to reading your stories and memories in the comments. And this is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.